our discontent made glorious summer by this son of York and all the clouds that lowered upon our house and the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarms changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front, and now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasing of a lute. But I, that am not shaped for sportive tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking glass, I, that am rudely stamped, and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph, I, that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated a feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world scarce half made up, and that so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I halt by them. <laughs> Why, I, in this weak piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time, unless to spy my shadow in the sun. Hmm? and descant on my own deformity. Hooray! And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain <laughs> and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, Inductions dangerous by drunken prophecies, libels, and dreams to set my brother, Clarence, and the king in deadly hate. The one against the other. And if King Edward be as true and just as I am subtle, false, and treacherous, this day should Clarence closely be mewed up about a prophecy which says that G of Edward's heirs, the murderer shall be. Dive thoughts down to my soul. Here Clarence comes. <laughs>